Good morning from the Rice County Fair, the 2021 Rice County Fair. I call it my day to celebrate agriculture at the Rice County Fair. We are going to call upon uh, John DeBort. Oh, by the way, I should have learned this. Always remember your sponsors. Thanks to Community Club Oil Association in Fairville for sponsoring this live broadcast from the Rice County Fair, the best of the best, Rice County Agriculture Hall of Fame, along with Tara Longevin, Fairville Insurance, the Dakota Rice Corn and Soybean Growers, and the Rice County Pork Producers. Up here with me is John Dvorak, the manager of the Rice County Fair and also the instigator to get sweet little old innocent Jerry on the vertigo, but that's a story for another time. John is pulling rank on me this morning because he's a busy guy, so we're moving him up a little bit in the program because he says he has other responsibilities to take care of as we kick off day one of the Rice County Fair. John. Thank you, Jerry. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Welcome. Uh, we missed you last year. Where were you? <laughs> oh, that's right. We didn't have a fair. <laughs> so I'm glad that we could come together today and, and we were able to... Is that better? Okay. I'm glad that we were able to uh, host a fair this year. Uh, my fair board's been hard at work putting, putting plans into place and, and making sure that uh, we can do the best we can do. It's been challenging at times. I'm not going to say it hasn't been because uh, number one help is hard to find and uh, but you know by God they worked hard and, and we got things going and uh, in a short period of time uh, I think we've done the best we could so I'm glad that uh, everybody is able to come and I welcome everybody to the 2021 Rice County Fair. As Jerry told you uh, I do have a few obligations that I have to tend to this morning uh, there's two things that I want to do before I leave. The first thing I want to do is I always give out an award to an individual that's been time on the fair board for many, many years, has been active in the county, has been active on the fair board, and I think this year uh, we've come up with a pretty good individual. So uh, without further ado, if I could have Jake Gillen come to the front here, please. Jake is coming up here. Uh, Jake has been a member of the fair board for, for many, many years. Uh, he served as the liaison with the county commissioners, uh, was always a force behind what happened here at the fairgrounds, carried our plea out to the commissioners very well. Uh, a lot of you don't know this, but Jake has donated a lot of his savings to buildings here at the, at the fairgrounds. And uh, we are very grateful to Jake and his family for for being able to do this because a lot of these buildings wouldn't have happened without Jake uh, donating the money he has. So uh, he's very grateful. So this year I would like to present the 2021 Friend of Agriculture to Jake Gillen. So yeah. well. I'm a man of few words, like most people think, but it, I'm not. I just, when I get somebody in, like this in front of me, I just ramble on and on. But uh, it's uh, very uh, well appreciated. I'm sorry that my wife is not here to accept this with me, but uh, we were a good tandem over a lot of years, and so thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. I know you didn't come here to listen to me, so I'm going to make my last announcement here, and uh, I think I'll be gone. Uh, I, do, I promise. And I won't get you to do any more stuff, Jerry, that your wife will get mad at you about. I want to uh, introduce a speaker next. Uh, I want to introduce uh, Commissioner Bag from Minnesota, uh, Tom Peterson. Uh, Tom and I are great friends. Uh, this last year with COVID and other issues, Tom and I spent uh, many, many hours on the telephone. Uh, we have a great individual here that's uh, not only working for the state of Minnesota, but also is working for Rice County Agriculture. So I just want to present to you Tom Peterson. Well, thanks, John. And it's great to be here at a county fair. I, I love county fairs. I've 
shown uh, animals and livestock my whole life. I'm a 35 plus year exhibitor uh, livestock at the Minnesota State Fair, uh, mostly horses. It's, uh, I, I go, if I can, to about 10 different county fairs to compete across the state. And then I get to be uh, Ag Commissioner, which some days is great and other days is challenging. But, you know, one of the things... Like when he gets phone calls from me for an interview. <laughs> well, uh, yes, and uh, Jerry, Jerry's, a, Jerry's a tough interviewer, by the way, so he uh, does a great job. And, uh, but, you know, just uh, the, the Department of Agriculture, if you don't know, we administer a lot of grants through uh, the state, through our department. And so it was great, John just took me on a, a cart ride around to see all the great things that you're doing with those dollars in the investments that we do to help uh, explain. And this is a great opportunity to showcase agriculture to everybody. And so the new swine barn that you're building here, and uh, it's all great because it all works with uh, all the department and, uh, and Senator Jasinski is good to be here too because the, if you need the support from the legislature, helps back all that up. I just want to put one more pitch in for our state as we look at it from an agriculture standpoint and it's great to get down here and visit with all our, our farmers but you know, uh, and good to see the crops are in decent condition here uh, in this state. You know, I've heard today like we're going to have a crop. Today I'm going to be up in northwest Minnesota and I ask that everybody keeps those uh, folks in, in your mind because as we get into that drought and Farmers will call me and they don't, they're out of hay, you know, and their uh, fields are drying up and we're trying to do everything we can, but uh, think of that because we're in this as a state together and we'll, we'll try to get through it as best we can, whether it's connecting people here with people up there and, uh, you know, we just try to do everything we can. So great to be here today and visit with everybody. I really appreciate John and it's always great to visit with Jerry. So Jerry, thank you. I hope we're recording that back at the studio. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> now we'd like to tell them the 2021 Rice County Fair Ambassadors to introduce themselves and the official welcome to the Rice County Fair. Hi, I'm Emma Roberts. Hi, I'm Courtney Pryor. And missing from us is Marissa Winget and our junior ambassadors. Hi, I'm Alexa Rojas. Hi, I'm, I'm Clara Widget. And we just want to welcome you to the fair. Before we go, your favorite part of the Rice County Fair? Mine is the Derby. Mine would be showing my animals. Mine is going on the rides. <laughs> Mine is hanging out with my friends. Let's give them a round of applause. Fair. Not only during the fair, but you should get to a lot of parades and community celebrations. They'll be representing the Rice County Fair at all of those different events. Now I'd like to call up the lady who keeps a lot of us organized. The Fairville Chamber of Commerce Agribusiness Committee put this program together along with the support of the Rice County Fair and also Doug Gilbertson over there at the Nearstrand Agri Center for the best of the best, the Rice County Agriculture Hall of Fame program. And this is a young lady that keeps us all pointed in the right direction, Cassie from the Chamber. Uh, thank you all for coming today. Um, I'm Cassie with the Faribault Chamber. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that 2020 and 2021 have been really difficult, um, but I'm renewed with positivity uh, today as we stand here at the Rice County Fair together. Um, so for that, we got through this together. Um, so for that, I would like to thank everyone, and I think we deserve a round of applause for that. So our Agribusiness Committee's mission and purpose is to connect and advance relationships between farm producers and community business leaders. It's also to help promote egg careers to our youth and bring greater understanding of the importance agriculture plays in our economy. On behalf of the Chamber, I'd like to thank the dedicated individuals who serve on this committee. Um, they host a variety of events throughout the year, again, to promote agriculture in the Faribault area. So I think they also deserve a round of applause. So as 
always, we would like to thank our sponsors for today's great event. They're listed in the program. Um, as you visit these businesses, um, please thank them for their role in today's event um, and also how they um, contribute to our local egg economy. Thank you, Cassie. The Federal Chamber of Commerce is one of, I believe, only two Chamber of Commerce is in the entire state of Minnesota that have an agribusiness committee. So we're pretty proud of that and all the things that we do. I'd like to call on Greg Bongard, who's uh, president of the Faribault Chamber of Commerce uh, Agribusiness Committee, to tell you a couple of things that we do throughout the year in addition to the best of the best of Rice County Agriculture Hall of Fame program here at the fair. Well, thank you, Jerry. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We have the agribusiness committee we sponsor and host what we call third grade to the farm, where every spring we try to take the third graders from the local schools out the farms and get indoctrinated what goes on now on the farm. Then we also do the third grade in the classroom, which Jerry helps us with, and a couple of others where we give some instruction on the impact of ag in the area. Then we also do the, oh, let's see, the farmer's market down on the Central Park area there. Then we also do an egg brunch or lunch, which is still in flux, which one we're going to do now that COVID's over with, so we'll get back on track with that. And uh, we're always looking for new members that want to get involved in agriculture. It's a fun thing to do to meet primarily kids and promote agriculture. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Greg. Before we get on to the induction ceremony for the 2021 class of the Rice County Agriculture Hall of Fame, I'd just like to call Randy Hansen up here, the president of the Rice County Farm Bureau, that helped in big part with the, the breakfast and a lot of the other things. So, of course, we'll call Randy up later for the Century Farm too. But thank you, Jerry. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody here. Uh, Rice County is a great agriculture county, and it's. It's great that we can recognize all these people that are winning awards today. So, uh, with that, let's get on with the show, Jerry. Thank you. Art, if you'd like to make your way up here, Art is a member of the Fairboat Chamber of Commerce Angler Business Committee and really help get going and is keeping going the Rice County Agriculture Hall of Fame, the best of the best. And Mike from the Nearstrand Angler Center, why don't you come on and head up here too because we want to thank uh, you and Doug and the rest of the crew at the nearest Strand Agro Center for sponsoring the program. Thank you, Jerry, and uh, least we forget, uh, let's give a big round of applause to Jerry for uh, helping us out with this program year after year. <laughs> this is our 14th group of inductees into the Rice County Agriculture Hall of Fame, and uh, we are absolutely overwhelmed by the huge turnout that we've got today. I uh, think you to uh, each and every one of you for coming. Special thank you to the people that nominate these individuals. We do have nomination forms available already for the uh, 2022 Ag Hall of Fame. I've got some over here on the table. They're also available on the Rice County Fair website and the Chamber of Commerce uh, website. Uh, Jerry has some at KBHL and any member of our, our committee also has them. So uh, get those uh, nomination forms uh, filled out and returned to me. A uh, reminder to our three uh, Hall of Fame winners, uh, when you leave today, please leave the plaques uh, up here on the table. During the fair, they'll be on display in the Gillen Building. Uh, Jake Gillen and his family uh, uh, made a significant donation to the Rice County Fair a number of years ago to uh, build a great new uh, open class exhibit building and uh, these plaques uh, are on uh, display there during the fair. In addition, there is a large plaque that uh, Doug Gilbertson from the uh, Nurse Strand Agri Center uh, has donated that lists all the winners that have been inducted in the last 14 years. Don't go too far, Art, but Mike, you're representing Doug and the rest of the crew at the Nearstrand Strand Agri Center. Uh, pass a word back to Doug, he's out of town, but we really appreciate you helping sponsor this award at the Rice County Fair. It's an honor for Doug to sponsor this, and I think he's done it since the beginning, so he takes a lot of pride in it. I just want to congratulate all the award winners today and the dedication that they've shown to agriculture. Well, thank you, Mike.
thanks for all the plaques and the pictures and everything. So again, special thanks to Doug Gilbertson, Mike Anders, and the rest of the crew over there at the Near Strand Agri Center. Well, Archer, we get on with uh, recognizing three great individuals being inducted into the 2021 Rice County Agriculture Hall of Fame. Our first inductee is Howard and Evelyn Holden, and uh, the Holdens were nominated by uh, Mr. Paul Liebenstein, who is here somewhere. And before he comes up here, I've got to tell you, Jerry, I had a little problem picking up a prescription the other day. <laughs> Seems like things in Fearbo are changing a lot, and I, I'm, like many of you, I, I take some prescriptions. I don't remember what for, but, I, but my wife makes sure I, I, I get them on some type of a schedule. And I got a call from the pharmacy that said my prescription was ready, so I came into town and I drove up to the speaker and the lady said, may I help you? And I said, uh, yeah, Art Madsen, I'm here to pick up my prescription. You always got to give me your birth date, uh, January 5th, uh, 19, uh, 1945. There was a little pause and a little giggle. And I said, she said, I'm sorry, sir, I can't help you. I said, what do you mean you can't help me? I got a call from the pharmacy that said I got a prescription here. She said, well, that may be, but you're at, at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, McDonald's, how long have you been here? And she said, well, 45 or 50 years. I said, well, that's about when I moved up here from Iowa. She says, well, that's probably the reason. <laughs> Paul Liebenstein. There's one more reason. He's not a U of M grad, Iowa State. <laughs> well, the good thing is, is I, is I found a shorter version of John's um, uh, synopsis he wrote up uh, for, for his father here today. So. I'll, uh, I'll go with that one, I think, in the interest of, uh, of time. So, um, I would like to, uh, for Howard and Evelyn Holden, um, into the Hall of Fame here. Howard was the second son of William and Matilda Holden and was raised on his parents' Shady Lane farm about one mile east of Northfield on uh, Wall Street Road. Um, Howard started school at St. Olaf College, but returned to the farm after his father was gored by a bull. Uh, he took over the farming operation, raising crops and a variety of livestock and poultry. Uh, in his early years, he was filling silo, as I understand, one day, and refilling the tractor with gas, and uh, was severely burned, and uh, it was touch and go, the way it sounds, for several weeks, very early in his uh, farming career. Um, Howard's first experience with turkeys began in the 40s by helping a neighbor. And then I think his interest really peaked in the, with the turkeys when he met uh, Evelyn Allen, whose, farmers, whose parents raised show turkeys. Howard was an early innovator in turkey production. He invented uh, automatic waters and feeders and an elevated flooring system to prevent disease. Um, he collaborated with other turkey farmers at the, in the University of Minnesota. Howard was also one of the founders and served as the first president of the Fairbow Turkey Incorporated, um, the turkey plant that's still here in Fairbow today under, uh, now it's a Hormel's Genial Turkey Store. And they had some new refrigeration techniques and whatnot back at the time that they innovated to help with uh, food safety and uh, marketing of turkeys. Howard entered the hog production in the 1960s and was, was named to Minnesota Pork Producer Honor Roll in 1971 for his success with production and disease control. Howard also had a dairy operation. It was one of the first in the state with a milking parlor and a deep bedded loafing barn in the 1950s. So maybe he could have gone the other way and stayed in the dairy, I guess. But, uh, Howard was a, uh, was a director for the Northfield Cooperative Elevator and served as its president in 1965. Um, he was also very involved in the Northfield United Methodist Church and 
and helped uh, put together and build the, the church that's in Northfield today. Um, he did several other things in the community. He was one of the key members to get the swimming pool built in Northfield at, uh, at the, in, in town there. And um, a lot of people in town thought at the time it was kind of a extravagant to have a swimming pool, but he had witnessed several tragedies at the local gravel pit as kids were learning to swim and whatnot and wanted a safer place for, for them. He also did a lot of work on the current high school in Northfield. Um, as I understand, maybe it didn't turn out the way he envisioned or hoped, but he spent a lot of time and uh, it maybe cost him a few friends by having a different opinion on, on, on that. Um, So, having established three separate farms in Rice and Dakota counties during his career, in 1970, Howard and Evelyn incorporated his Holden Farms Incorporated to help bring their four sons into the family business. The sons John, Kent, Barry, and Craig continued managing and growing Holden Farms throughout the 70s and 80s, eventually establishing three new farming entities in the 90s. Um, they, today, not only the four sons involved, but there's also uh, six, six of the grandsons, I believe, are involved as well. Um, after World War II, they helped, uh, had hosted a German family here, was displaced by the war, and they became, became uh, family friends, and they got their citizenship here. did a lot of traveling um, throughout the country, most of it on farm business, of course, um, with, with, for the turkeys. And, um, but I think this last line kind of sums it up for him. Howard Holden was a, was a stimulator of broader thinking to those of, around him. So, Howard and Evelyn Holden. We have the Holdens come up and we can take some pictures. Yeah. Uh, my name's Craig. Uh, I didn't realize Paul was going to read that long narrative, but we appreciate it. Thank you. You must be in radio. <laughs> Anyhow, good morning. Uh, it's an honor and privilege to be here with the other good people who deeply appreciate the importance of agriculture and farming. And to uh, help center, celebrate this year's induction is the best of the best, including my late parents, Howard uh, Frederick and Evelyn Ruth Holden. We learn from those who went before us and hopefully each of our succeeding generations, we were able to build greater camaraderie, better community, creative innovation, and as the first uh, natives of this land spoke, honor the cooperation amongst all of our relations. That means the people, the land, the river, the animals, birds, the sky, I'm with you. Okay, uh, we're more on our existence yet interdependent while we're here together and we are remembered for how we live this life behind us. All of our parents here today and those before us uh, left us with many lessons. For the succeeding generations of the Holdens, these lessons included courage, curiosity, joy of work, the joy of play, productivity held together with humility, integrity, and a sense of purpose and of deep meaning. And as I reflect on two of the most important lessons that were passed on to myself and my brothers from our parents, Howard and Evelyn, from the time we were very young, it was these words that I'll never forget. From my father, Howard Holden, who would say to me at the end of a long day as we came in from the fields or the barns, covered in sweat, dust, and manure, Craig, there is no profession more noble than producing food for the American people. We can be very proud of what we are doing. If he were here with us today in what was truly become a global economy, with literally billions of other people, he might qualify as a mark in saying, there's no profession more noble than producing food for all of the world's hungry people. We all need to eat. 
And from his partner in farming and in life, Evelyn, she shared with me that of all the human emotions, there is none more powerful than gratitude. Never forget to count your blessings and for what and for whom you are grateful. These are the lessons in life and farming that I will never forget, so yes, I'm very grateful. In closing, there are two brief anecdotes for this solemn occasion that I would share with you. Never underestimate the significance of a partner and what they bring to the table, both literally and figuratively. My mother-to-be was a young school teacher who moved to Northfield for her first job from the Red River Valley of the North. My father-to-be met her at the Northfield High School homecoming, where in those days, graduates of the high school literally came to the homecoming. Howard sidled up to young Evelyn and asked her the first question, so tell me about raising turkeys. I know your family is famous. The back story is that after Evelyn had left the prairie and the hard work of farming as a young woman, the last thing she wanted to do was talk about turkeys, let alone raise them. At any rate, she told me later that was one of the weirdest pickup lines any man had ever <laughs> Romance eventually broke out between them and the rest they say is history. <laughs> Evelyn raised four sons, loved numerous grandchildren, nephews, nieces, and cousins. She had no daughters. She was surrounded by men, including numerous farmhands that she fed, made payroll for, managed the books, baked, cooked, clothed, cleaned, and just helped keep everything running smoothly. She was tireless yet full of grace, and like her husband, she worked in the larger community for better schools, for world peace, clothing and feeding the poor, and teaching her offspring about the often unsung yet important role of women in this world, and of the partnerships forged with strong but sometimes overly adventurous and driven men. And Howard was generally a man of few words. He could be stoic and focused, but he always carried an uncanny sense of humor even during the darkest times. He was an expert at listening and asking questions of others. He often reminded me that we as humans can learn much more by asking and listening rather than talking and imparting our own opinions on others. So we take moments like this to honor and remember the innovators of Midwestern agriculture who gave so much to their friends and their wider community. Never forget where we came from. And that is the power of cooperation and partnerships that paves the way to better life for all people and all of our relations. Both Howard and Evelyn, uh, and for them, we are eternally grateful for the many lessons and gifts they gave in farming the land that bestowed upon us, upon our children, our grandchildren. Thank you all for sharing this moment today. Uh, for those who were present, for those who couldn't make it, and uh, most importantly, for those who came before us. Thank you. County Fair, the best of the best, the Rice County Agriculture Hall of Fame program. We're going to pick it up again. Paul Liebenstein, who nominated the Holdens, is going to make the presentation. And Paul, would you read what that plaque says that the family will get? Sure. <laughs> to Howard and Evelyn Holden. Uh, Northfield native Howard Holden and Evelyn Ruth Allen Holden from Red River Valley. Uh, second generation diversified family farm. Northfield, Watersford Townships, um, proud parents and dedicated community civic leaders producing crops, dairy, pork, beef, cattle, and poultry. There's that dairy thing again. <laughs> Beginning in the 1930s, they were the pioneers of Minnesota's fledgling com uh, commercial turkey industry and uh, in contributing to new technologies for automatic watering feeding systems, improved year-round housing and flock health collaborators with other farmers in the University of Minnesota to create novel husbandry practices and improve disease suppression, transform labor-intensive turkey and livestock production to new and more economical systems, processing from pasture-raised seasonal turkeys to controlled environment all-season turkey production. Early producers of the commercial eggs for uh, consumer turkey Hatcheries established one of the first farmer cooperative turkey processing plants, Faribault Turkeys Inc., in, to support producers with 
wholesome packaging and reliable market outlet, director of the Northfield Elevate, uh, Farmers Elevator Co-op. Inducted into the Minnesota Pork Producers Honor Roll for contributions to improve husbandry. Howard and Evelyn were also intimately committed to serving their larger community through the various nonprofit organizations, including the Big Giants 4 H Club, the Northfield Foundation that built the first public swimming pool, community taxpayers associations to promote the new public school facilities, the Methodist Church Building Community, Church Women United, the Community Action Center, and the sponsored displaced German, Estonian, and Latino families post-World War II. You want to make the presentation, Paul? Let's give the Holden family a hand. You talk about that vertigo ride? If I want to go on a really scary ride, all I do is give my wife the car keys. <laughs> Our next inductee is uh, a lady that's very familiar here at the Rice County Fair, uh, Mary Ann Langsley, who was, inducted, who was uh, nominated by uh, the lovely Julie Fox, who is going to come up and uh, make the presentation. Julie, come on. You know, 34 years ago when I came to Rice County, young kid, fresh out of college, well, you guys all know. You think you know everything, but you don't. Well, there was two people I knew. One was Art Madsen, and I hate to tell you, Art, 40 plus years ago, you were this young, strapping, 4 H beef judge in Dakota County. That's where I grew up. The other gentleman I knew was Dick Langsley, my parents, and the Langsleys were very successful hog producers. And as we know, behind every good husband is a wife. And that's Mary Ann Langsley. I, uh, Mary Ann was dedicated, faith, family, and farming. Her faith, married 57 years now to Nick, you've got to have faith. <laughs> and uh, family, uh, she's got lovely kids. We'll introduce them in a little bit. I, uh, when I came to town, they brought me into their house like I was family, so it's very special. But I do have to say, Mary Ann had a little extra faith because her daughter Kim and I were roommates for a couple of years, her stint of time, and she had to have a lot of faith because the shenanigans Kim got me into, she needed faith. And farming, which that's why we're all here today, is they have very successful hog farmers, crop farmers. They always had big gardens, flowers, and Dick and Mary Ann were, were always together with it. Um, they volunteered a lot in the church. 4-H program, their kids were very successful in 4-H. Uh, Mary Ann, as a kid, as, as a Dubon girl from Rice County, um, grew up through the program, met Dick, and that rest is history, and we won't get into that. And then also, um, she loved the fair so much, she continued to go with uh, volunteering for the open class. And her goal, I was told, 50 years, and she made it for 50 years. So at this time, I want to have Marianne come up for the award. <laughs> On the plaque, it says, dedicated her, oh, where do I get these ideas from? Dedicated her life, dedicated her life to faith, family, and farming. A master of cooking, baking, and sewing. Willing to lend a helping hand no matter what. Dedicated her time to the Rice 24 H program as a parent and leader. A gardener, growing many plants side by side with her husband. Dedicated over 50 years of service to Rice County Open Class. Mary Ann, would you like to say just a word or two? Come just a bit closer. My mic cord isn't quite that long. Here we go. I guess I got to reel it over there. I must say thank you to everybody that I've worked with all these years. I've enjoyed it. And you had to put up with me, but we made it through the years. <laughs> I just want to introduce them, their family. Richard, everybody knows Dick Langsley. If they don't, well, they're up in heaven, I guess. Uh, next, Dick is his sister, Jean. Uh, their kids, Kim, she was, she was mischief one. Uh, her husband, Marty, uh, let's see, there's Karen in the back, there's Kurt, oh, Kenny, he's the oldest one, sorry, forgot about that. 
Always keep, now I wonder why we always got in trouble. Uh, Pete, their son-in-law, Grace, granddaughter, Julia, I think they named her after me, I don't know. Uh, granddaughter, so well-deserving award. Thank you. If you put a lame pony, a skinny pig, and a dirty teddy bear in a tent on a parking lot, what do you have? That would be the Iowa State Fair. <laughs> it's not exactly like Minnesota. If you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. It's a, it's a, great, uh, it's a great egg fair, but it's... Uh, yeah, it's the Iowa State Fair. Hey, our third inductee into the Rice County Agricultural Hall of Fame is uh, uh, Frank Schroeder. And we're going to ask Woody to come up. And uh, Woody is going to introduce uh, the rest of the family that's here. And then we'll uh, make the presentation of the plaque. Uh, everybody knows Woody, so let's give him a big hand when he comes on up. Come on, Woody. <laughs> Woody's shy. I'm scared of microphones, too, right, Woody? <laughs> Woody's uh, afraid of microphones too, right? He was an auctioneer for decades, donated his time for the Rice County Forage Livestock Auction. Yeah, this is the last one this year. I promise you. <laughs> 35 years of it, and that's enough. All right, uh, on behalf of the Schroeder family, I'd like to acknowledge and congratulate and thank the agribusiness people that uh, put on this program. Uh, we accept this nomination and uh, uh, are grateful for. Um, I have some family here. Uh, I have a brother Marvin who resides here in Fairville and of course, yeah go ahead if you're able. <laughs> you're older than I am. <laughs> and this is Marv and, uh, and of course Paul Liebenstein you know he's a, a, a nephew <laughs> and uh, and of course, uh, Sarah Schroeder there, that's Marvin's wife, and they live in Faribault here. And of course, my wife I own. And then, not last, but, and not least, but we're gonna name Artis Liebenstein as a sister. <laughs> and then we have Denise Ann Liebenstein Stewart. She traveled all the way from the East Coast to be here for this. Uh, so thank you, Ann, for for showing up today. I know it was just kind of a coincidence, but we're going to recognize it. So anyway, the Schroeder family and my wife, I hope, by golly, I missed her, didn't I? And, um, oh, I'm in trouble. And she's got the car keys. <laughs> so I think I'm in a little bit in trouble, but on behalf of the Schroeder family, uh, Fred and Grata Schroeder uh, were married in 1923 and started uh, their 80-acre farm, which was adjacent to the original Schroeder family farm uh, in Bridgewater Township. And uh, Dad was a self-learner. Uh, he educated himself. Uh, I might make the point that <clears throat> of all the recognitions that you see in the, the program here, he made that all good on an eighth grade education. Um, he was a founder of a lot of different programs, uh, a farmer's cooperative elevator in Northfield. Uh, he was one of the founders of that, uh, Northfield and Dundas. Uh, I think he was on that board 40 some years. Uh, then the county uh, offices, of course, uh, uh, all the terminologies there, PMA, ASC, and all the rest of them. And, my niece there wanted me to give a little dissertation about what each one of them meant. But then uh, when I heard uh, Commissioner Peterson's name mentioned here, I thought maybe I'd turn that over to him and any one of you can go ask him about what those, determined, what those uh, uh, initials meant. Um, he spent much time in the courthouse in Faribault and I can recall him coming home uh, at night and uh, mother kind of ran the farm during the day and uh, there was a quick meeting as he came in the door of what happened and it was about seven minutes later he was in his farm work clothes out in the field or in the in the barn or wherever it might be uh, the farm was a general operation with uh, dairy cattle hogs and and chickens that was mother's grocery money uh, so it was a simple operation but it grew well uh, he educated, had six children, or they had six children, educated them all, uh, whether it be college or vocationals, uh, but they've all uh, uh, gained some type of education. Um, 
he was a, a kind of a speaker as well. Um, he gave programs to about agriculture in at St. Old College. He spoke at FFA programs and uh, wrote many articles for uh, the NAAC uh, papers, which was an agricultural paper for the state of Minnesota at the time. Um, but his length of uh, uh, services, his entire life was dedicated to agriculture. Um, he was very proud of his membership in the Rotary Club, both Faribault and Northfield, and he was president in Northfield for a year at that time. Um, following his death, the, the um, Rotary Club wrote uh, uh, an article on him, on honoring him for his uh, exuberance and his uh, joyful glee and the blue eyes that uh, would gleam at you when he reached for your arm to shake your hand. That was always a tradition of, of his that uh, he enjoyed. He was a faithful church member. Uh, he was one of the founders of one of the Lutheran churches in Northfield um, and was served as a secretary treasurer of that for 20 some years. His length of service to each um, organization that he belonged to was quite lengthy. Um, 44 years in the elevator, 26 years in Rice County with ASC, PMA, and, and, and uh, ASCS. Uh, but all of those organizations uh, meant a great deal to him and was part of his educational program. So on behalf of our family, and thank you to the Agricultural Committees for uh, accepting this nomination for our dad, Fred Schreiber. Woody and, and the entire Schroeder family, uh, uh, congratulations. Uh, a beautiful plaque that says the Rice County Agricultural Hall of Fame 2021, Fred Schroeder. Married Gladys Kern, raised six children, farmed 312 acre general crop and livestock farm, served as director and secretary treasurer of the Farmers Cooperative Elevator for 44 years served as chairman of county AAA, PMA, and ASC programs for 22 years, served as chairman of the USDA County War Board during World War II, and was active on the Extension Board, Rice County Aid Society, Bridgewater Town Board, Rotary Club, and his church. Congratulations to the family of Fred Schroeder. Truly an honor, uh, and the picture that we have is a, a family favorite, so we'll just hand that one down the line and they can take a look at it. Thank you, Jerry. We're going to move along now. You're gonna, I think you found out what diverse, uh, or how diverse agriculture is in Rice County and southern, southeastern Minnesota. We're going to find out a little bit more about how diverse it is. University of Minnesota recognizes the Rice County Farm Family of the Year, Mercedes Moffitt, if you'd like to come up. Mercedes is filling in for Claire, who's out on leave. This is the first time that I met Mercedes. We've known each other for almost two months, talking and recording over the phone. So Mercedes, why don't you introduce the Donahue family? Hello, everyone. I'm Mercedes, as Jerry said. Um, so this year, I have had the privilege of filling in for Claire, and I've got to help recognize the Donahue family. So each year, Extension nominates someone for the Farm Family of the Year. So the Farm Family Recognition Program honors fam farm families from throughout Minnesota who have made significant contributions to Minnesota agriculture and their communities. So each year, all 87 counties within the state of Minnesota select a family to recognize. Not only are these families recognized within the county, but they are also all brought together to be recognized on the state level. So, the Farm Family Recognition Program has been sponsored and coordinated by the University of Minnesota Extension, the College of Food, Agriculture, and Natural Resource Sciences, and the College of Veterinary Medicine. The statewide Farm Family Recognition Day will take place at Farm Fest on Thursday, August 5th this year. So, please come out and recognize the family there, too. So each year, the Rice County Extension Committee selects a Farm Family of the Year for the county. The county Extension Committee is composed of six public members, two commissioners, and county staff. 
Besides selecting the farm family, they provide support for extension programs and advocate for services for county citizens. I would like to extend a thank you to the committee members for all that they do and for helping select this family. So, as previously mentioned, this year the Rice County Extension Committee has selected the Donahues for your 2021 Farm Family of the Year. I'm going to ask the family to please come up here while I tell you all a little bit more about what they do. So the Donahue's Greenhouses was purchased in 1972 and it was originally a chrysanthemum business. As the business progressed in the 1980s, they decided to switch over from growing mums to start specializing in clematis. The family business, as I said, specializing in clematis, they now make a point to ship out over 80,000, eight, no, excuse me, 800,000 clematis plants throughout the entire United States every single year. And they're one of only few growers across the nation that do what they do with clematis. They also propagate and grow their own small plants that you all are able to go out and purchase at their own greenhouses each summer, which help make our summers better and brighter because of them. Um, so as the business has gone on, they've expanded their retail garden center, and they have four acres of a wide variety of plants that they ship from the Fairboat location each spring. And they currently maintain five acres of greenhouse space between the family's Fairboat location, and they also have one in Morristown. Um, many family members help own and operate the business. Lois here is retired, but she's still a part owner. Uh, Mark, Jim, Tim, and Mick are all co-owners and responsible for greenhouse operations. Mary is in charge of accounts payable. And then Kathy is co-owner and office manager. Julie is co-owner and retail manager. And Dan and Phil Weber handle growing operations while Victoria Nass works as administrative assistants for the business. Along with all their agriculture help that they do within the community, they make a point to grow the baskets uh, within the city of Fairbold each year, so they help provide color for all of us to help enjoy our summertime. They also pride themselves in being a destination greenhouse, and they draw traffic in from all, not only just across the state, but many other states as well. People come to visit and help provide a little bit of love here in Faribault because of them and so they also do their part not only with this but they also are each members of different school boards help on churches help do different garden tours and so everyone please join me in a round of applause in celebrating the Donahue family and a certificate for them just like to say thank you guys for all that you do and we're really pleased to be able to recognize you guys this year and you guys just do such amazing work and you help all of us have a better summer because of it so just thank you all for what you all do. Thank you Mercedes and congratulations to the Donahue Tree at the Rice County Fair continues with conservation awards. Uh oh am I in trouble? But first I've just been notified by Mr. Greg Bongard that there's a very important announcement, important, I underline what important, announcement that needs to be made. Uh, Greg, come on up. I don't see this in the program anywhere. Well, I, I hope this is a surprise. Uh, I have to tell you a little bit about this adventure. We attempted to surprise Jerry. Then someone called me and said, uh, Did you, could you get a hold of his wife, Louise, to make sure that she could come? And none of us had her phone number, so what I did was drive up to Jerry's neighborhood, and I saw his car was still in the driveway, so I didn't want to knock on the door at that point. So then I walked over across the street to his neighbor, uh, who used to be the CEO or executive at the Woolen Mills, Pete Johnson, and I asked, do you know their phone number? He said, no. But then all of a sudden, uh, Jerry comes out of, the, out of the house, into his car. I said, Pete, I have to duck behind the corner here so he doesn't see me up here. So that was part of the adventure to try and make something a surprise. 
But before I talk about this, if I could have Jerry's family come up along with uh, his wife, Louise. I was wondering why my family was, was here. And this is the first time in a long time I was a little nervous emceeing or hosting something because usually I don't have to do it in front of my wife, Louise. Can I tell you one quick story about Louise? Art, where are you? Now, driving that car, it's a little different when Louise and I are going somewhere. Because when we're driving somewhere, it's Louise that's going, uh, let's just say a little uncomfortably because Jerry's so busy gawking at the farms and the fields that she wants to take the car's keys from me. Then the other part of the adventure continued the surprise factor. Uh, Pete Johnson told me that Louise worked at Walgreens, so then I went over there and left my card with instructions to have her call me. And then later in the day, Jerry calls and says, Greg, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, is the cat out of the bag? And I thought, maybe not. But anyway, but it's Let's tell the rest of the story. I'm thinking, so why does Greg want to talk to Louise? And Louise had retired. Where's the Holdens? After uh, 20 years working at Hormel Genio here in town, and she was bored out of her mind. Maybe I was around too much. We got a part-time job at Walgreens. So I asked Louise when she could be. Well, what did Greg want? Well, he knew it. What a dedicated company man. Greg Louise said, well, he knew I retired. He knew I had a 401k and profit sharing in Hormel, so he was willing to offer First United Bank's help to set up an individual retirement account. That's what Louise told me. <laughs> that might be true. <laughs> but uh, the reason uh, for this special award for Jerry, I'll just recite this here. Jerry's been a tremendous ambassador and promoter of agriculture in our region for over 26 years at KDHL. He continues to do more than enough when working with young and old alike to ensure a continued strong future for us all. His efforts are recognized by the numerous awards he's received, including 2020 FFA Hall of Fame, 2016 Minnesota Farm Bureau Communicator of the Year, and Pork Producers Good Neighbor Award. Sincerely, the Ag Committee. Jerry, we'd like to have you this award. simple country boy that's so proud of this industry that I'm involved in. You had a sample of that here, these incredible people. I say it's real people. People like you, people involved here, made this country the wealthiest, most powerful nation in the history of the world because of this incredible agriculture system. We do so well, provide the safe, safest and most affordable food supply in the world. Thank you, Jerry. Introduce Louise. Real quick story about Louise. I mentioned she's working part time at Walgreens, and the son came in with his dad, retired dad, retired farmer. And Louise was obviously being a degree in Iran. They were putting it to good use, helping with the COVID injections. And this retired farmer came in, Louise was visiting with him, and Louise always says to kids, if you're going to give someone an injection, get them talking, find out about them, talk to them, and they aren't paying so much attention to what you do before you know it, it's over. So Louise was talking to this man, he said he was retired. No, he wasn't, he was still farming. And we said, oh, where do you live? In the outside of town? He said, well, just to KDHL? He said, yeah, all the time. He said, you listen to Jerry? Yeah, Jerry Grosskreutz. Well, that's my husband. You're Louise! <laughs> she puts up with a lot. Sometimes blind dates can work out, at least for some of us. Juniors in college of blind date. Daughter Laura lives in Lakeville. Granddaughter Annika, watch out for her if she, she picks on grandpas. Grandson Leif. Son-in-law, Mike, I thought you were in 
South Dakota. I think Steve and Megan got up even earlier. Son Steve and daughter-in-law Megan drove all the way in from Indianapolis. I just couldn't, oh, I saw you guys sitting out there now try and concentrate on what I'm supposed to do when your whole family is there and you go, what's going on? So thank you guys. And just like usual, after we're done, I think Dad and Grandpa is buying fair food before you guys have to get the roll. Uh -huh. Thank you. And thank you to the Agribusiness Committee. <laughs> now can we move on? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so uh, the uh, Chamber Committee got a hold of me. Uh, my name is Ed Terry, and I've uh, known Terry for all 26 years. He's been here going professionally and considered to be a personal friend as well. Uh, they gave me a half hour to tell Jerry's stories, so uh, I'm not sure where I should start. But uh, six weeks ago, you know, Jerry hosts John Dvorak on the Tuesday uh, Fair Talk, and uh, John gave Jerry an assignment. He says, Jerry, you're in charge of the weather. He says, I want 83 degrees, low humidity, and no rain for six days. Well, we obviously know that Jerry failed with the temperature business because it's going to be hot all week. And of course, the next thing, Jerry was not listening very well because Jerry's given us six weeks with no rain, not six days. So, you know, as a teacher, I have to give you a failure grade on <laughs> But Jerry is very well known, uh, not only in Faribault, uh, for his work with agriculture throughout southern Minnesota and way beyond that. You know, uh, a few years ago, he and Louise were uh, in Rome and Jerry was standing next to the Pope and one of the natives wanted to know who that guy with Jerry Grosstreitz was. So <laughs> he's obviously pretty darn important. Uh, he's done tens of thousands of interviews and, uh, you know, he's done with agricultural leaders and a couple of UFFA members want to come on up here. Uh, He's done a lot of interviews with uh, FFA members. We've got uh, Emma Kubal here and Keegan Lundak, is that how you pronounce, how you pronounce that? Uh, in their fine blues. And uh, so anyway, you know, ag leaders, FFA members, 4-H. Uh, and uh, Jerry has a very unique ability, particularly when he's working with young people, not these people, because they're pretty well spoken. But some kids are a little nervous when they get on the radio. But Jerry's got the ability to make them feel at ease. You know, he asks some questions and he kind of expects an answer more than yes or no, but sometimes he gets just yes or no. But Jerry's able to fill in the gaps, move on to next questions, and make these kids feel at ease. And uh, he has a real reputation, uh, you know, real respect in the agricultural industry. When he wants to find out information, he can call the corn growers, the pork producers, the soybean people, beef people, dairy people. Uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, you know, he knows how to contact legislators. He knows how to get in touch with the people in Congress uh, who are working on agricultural issues. Uh, talks to the Farm Bureau, the Farmers Union, and the list goes on. But, you know, they don't have to talk to Jerry. and They don't talk to all the ag uh, communicators. But, Jerry has developed just a tremendous reputation with these people, uh, and he gets uh, their respect and he gets their time. Uh, in addition to that, it's been mentioned, of course, that he works with the third graders uh, in town here and beyond Faribault now, uh, promoting agriculture, getting kids interested in agriculture, explaining where their food comes from. Uh, he volunteers with uh, the commodity groups. You know, I've seen him. Uh, at Jesse James days at Northfield cooking pork chops and pork burgers, etc. But I gotta tell you, you know, uh, I've learned a lot from Jerry over the years, but uh, I think he works there because he knows he's gonna get a free lunch. And that's the one thing I haven't learned that I haven't perfected from Jerry is how to get in on all these free lunches. But nonetheless, uh, very seriously, you know, congratulations to Jerry for 26 years of doing what he's done. Uh, you know, I would. You might think he was milking cows three times a day. He gets up at 3 o'clock in the morning, between 3 and 3.30, to get to the station by 4 to get things organized for the day. That's how dedicated this man is 
to agriculture in our area. And, you know, uh, he gives us the information that we need. He knows uh, how to get in touch with all those people that I just mentioned to get that kind of information. So, Jerry, once again, congratulations on 26 years, and I hope there's another 26 years yet to come with what you do for us. Thank you very much. I'm Emma Pugal, and I have been being interviewed by Jerry. Also, Miss Morris. Also, Miss Morris. <laughs> I've been being interviewed by Jerry since I was about that big. Um, and the, uh, one of the people contacted me asking if we could get some letters together for Jerry. So Keegan and I have brought our letters to you. Um, I came here this morning, I woke up at 5, a young kid waking up at 5, it's crazy, I know, I didn't want to either. Um, I got here and I didn't see Jerry's name on the program, so I was all, all bent out of shape because I thought we'd written all these letters to the wrong person, but I'm so glad, so glad that we wrote them to the right person, and um, I just had the pleasure of meeting Jerry this morning, but after everything I've heard about him, I'm so thankful to him for every, he, everything he's done in the agricultural community and everything that everyone here has done in the agricultural community. Us FFA members have all of you guys to thank for supporting agriculture and especially Jerry here because now there's an increasing number of people who don't really understand agriculture and anything like that and with Jerry doing his work spreading the word about agriculture we absolutely need it. So thank you Jerry. Maybe I've been fortunate because I happened to end up at KDHL by accident, but what fun is it to go somewhere or find out why bean leaves were puckering this year if you don't have any air time to talk about it? Or how are the crops handling the dry weather and how can we get our herbicides to work better? What fun is it to find out answers about that and do interviews with specialists if you don't have air time to talk about it? I have had opportunities to move on over these 26 years but fortunately, I realized that the grass was greener in the pasture I was in than moving on. I could say, you go to a network and you got three minutes, it takes a minute to say my name. What can you say in two minutes? In the KDHL, I might have a whole half hour. And let me introduce my boss, Paul Shea here. Great guy. I'll tell you the truth, I was a little worried a couple years ago when I found out my new boss was going to be this young guy. A lot of maturity in that kid. We have a great team at KDHL. Gordy's back at the studio. You know how well we work together. We try to have fun too, even if they always pick on me. Let's move on. There's a special bond between people involved in agriculture and their land. And it bothers me greatly when you sometimes hear in the media portrayed all farmers are interested in trying to make a profit. They don't care about their land, or in other cases, care about their livestock. There's a special bond between farmers and their land. So it's great to bring Steve Poss up here with Rice County Soil and Water Conservation District and Teresa to recognize our Conservation Award winners here. Thank you, Jerry. Good morning, everyone. Uh, just one more comment about Jerry. Uh, Keegan, the FFA student that was uh, here this morning, he uh, came up to us while we were eating breakfast and says, oh, do you know this guy named Jerry Grusekrutz? And I said, uh, well, yeah, that's the guy that's uh, kind of running the award show today. And he says, oh, well, I have an award. I thought he was getting an award. And I thought, I don't know anything about that. But uh, as it turns out, he did. So that's awesome. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Steve Boz, and I'm the manager at the Rice Soil and Water Conservation District here. In Rice County, and we have three awards that we give out annually. Uh, the first one that we're going to do is the Forest Stewardship Award. It recognizes the Rice County landowners or organizations who sustainably manage existing woodlands, restore native forest habitats, or practice management practices in agroforestry. I'm pleased to present this year's award to Dan and Joan Zilski of Rural Morristown. For over 50 years, the Zilskis have been planting trees and improving the woodlots on their farm. Influenced by his mother, who had a love for trees and rolling hillsides that were difficult to farm, Dan decided to sign some of his tillable acres 
up for the Conservation Reserve Program in the 1980s. Over the years, uh, over 5,000 trees have been planted in these areas, including oaks, walnuts, spruces, and pines to provide food and winter cover for many different species of wildlife. The Zielskis have also completed other practices to improve their woodland, including a direct seeding of oaks and walnuts, timber stand improvement, and controlling buckthorn. They also enrolled their woodland into the tree farm program and worked with the DNR forestry to complete a forest stewardship plan. Finally, the Zilskis enrolled 34 acres in, of their woodlands into a permanent conservation easement through the Forest Legacy Program, which protects the woodlot from de development. The Zilskis' commitment and dedication to stewardship and forest conservation make them an excellent selection for the 2021 Forest Stewardship Award. Congratulations. I was asked why I got, we got involved in this, and I had to say it was my mother. And I'll tell you, just so that you realize how true that is. We had a pine tree, or an evergreen tree in the front yard that was, I'm sure, 40, 40 some uh, feet tall, and a storm came in and top the top of it, completely off of it, and there stood that stump. And I said, I think I'll cut it down. No, she said, just let it. And over the next years, the pine tree the branches kept going up, and I was able to cut them and take a Christmas tree into my aunt, who could no longer have a big tree. And now I look, we sit on our front porch and look out at it. It's got four perfect branches going up, and it looks totally complete. So she was a great influence on me. And I appreciate it. All right, next up I'm going to pass the mic to Teresa DeMars, our Education Outreach Specialist, to do the last two awards. Uh, the next award we'll be presenting is the Wildlife Enhancement Award. The Wildlife Enhancement Award is presented to individuals or organizations who do an exemplary job in implementing conservation practices that benefit Rice County wildlife. I am pleased to present this year's award to the Rice County Pheasants Forever chapter. For over 15 years, Pheasants Forever in Rice County has been committed to improving habitat for pheasants and other wildlife. Each year, members of the chapter work with local landowners and public lands across the county to plant around 65 acres of food plots. They also give away seed to any landowner willing to plant a food plot. Over the years, Pheasants Forever has put $750,000 back into the ground to create high quality habitat right here in the county. In the Boyd Sartell Wildlife Management Area near Shieldsville, funds were used to improve the land in several ways. A food plot was planted to provide food for pheasants and other wildlife during the winter. Native prairie plants were seeded to improve habitat for nesting sites and provide habitat for pollinators. 30 acres of trees have been cleared in the management area to make way for even more native prairie. The Pheasants Forever chapter also purchased 100 acres of land here in the county, uh, which will add habitat to existing wildlife management areas. In addition to improving habitat, the chapter also promotes the Conservation Reserve Program and provides funding every year to hire a Farm Bill Conservation Technician for the Rice SWCD to implement the program. Last but not least, Rice County Pheasants Forever sponsors area high school trap shooting teams and also holds the Everett Osterman Memorial Youth Mentor Hunt every September. The Rice SWCD thanks the Rice County Pheasants Forever chapter for their commitment and dedication to improving wildlife habitat and promoting uh, conservation in Rice County. And uh, I wish them congratulations. Uh, their representative who was supposed to be here today had a work emergency and couldn't be here. 
but it will be my pleasure to pass the award on to them at their next meeting. And if our next award is the Outstanding Conservationist Award, but would um, Dan and Aaron Honkin please come forward? And I'll tell you a little bit about their operation. Uh, the Outstanding Conservationist Award recognizes individuals, conservation organizations, or others for their outstanding accomplishments in implementing conservation practices and improving Minnesota's natural resources. It is my honor to present this year's award to Dan and Aaron Honkin of Rural Farewell. Dan operates a 140 cow-calf beef operation, while Aaron grows flowers uh, for local consumers through a CSA, or Community Supported Agriculture Program. The Honkins have been implementing conservation practices on their farm for over 20 years. In 1994, Dan and Aaron took over the farm from Dan's father and began by turning 70 acres of highly erodible land into pasture. The Honkins used conservation tillage on the farm by planting no-till soybeans and using minimum tillage when planting corn. For the past seven years, the Honkins have been planting cover crops. Last year, Dan no-till planted 200 acres of winter cereal rye radish, and turnips. He also interceded 189 acres of cover crops into corn through the Rice SWDCD's uh, custom interseeding program. The Honkins pasture their beef cattle on the cover crops in the fall and, and, and in the spring and also par harvest part of the covers for feed. The Honkins have also been experimenting with Kernza, a perennial cover crop that produces a grain that can be harvested. Working with the University of Minnesota and Clean River Partners, the Honkins are planting 22 acres of Kernza through the Soil Health Income Protection Program. Dan rotates the cattle across his pastures and also plants multi-species seed mixes to provide high quality pasture for his cattle and habitat for pollinators. He also constructed a, free, a feedlot dike and diversion to filter feedlot runoff and prevent it from entering surrounding wetlands. The Honkins have also turned to solar power to, re to reduce their carbon footprint and save on electricity on the farm. This past year, they installed solar panels on their barn roof. They also use passive solar energy by using a system of black barrels filled with water which capture heat energy in their greenhouse during the day and it releases it back at night to provide heat for the plants. Finally, the Honkins have a 23-acre wetland re restoration and prairie planting enrolled through the Conservation Reserve Pro Program that provides high-quality habitat for Rice County wildlife. The Honkins stewardship of their land and dedication to conservation and soil health make them an excellent choice for the 2021 Outstanding Conservationist Award. Congratulations. Thank you, Steve and Teresa. Only Century Farms left. Randy Hansen, Rice County Farm Bureau, could you come up and help with the Century Farm presentations? And while well, Randy's coming up, quick little story about Teresa. Of course, last year we didn't do anything because of the pandemic. But the Rice County Soil and Water Conservation District still recognized winners. So we wanted to give them some recognition. So Teresa and I ran all over Rice County to record the interviews. Of course, with restrictions, Teresa drove her car. I drove my car. We did the interviews outside with these families. Well, Jerry's old focus with 200,000 miles on it, not too worried about driving on gravel roads. But Teresa had this fancy black car. And I said, boy, Teresa, it's a shame driving that fancy car on all these gravel roads. And Teresa said, just don't tell my husband. So we have a secret. We aren't going to tell Teresa's husband running all over Rice County the gravel roads with their fancy cars. Hi, Jerry. Today we're going to recognize uh, two area farmers, and actually the one I went to high school with and the other ones we uh, went to uh, tech with. So um, uh, the definition for a century farm 
is you need to be continuous uh, operation or in that name for, for 100 years, at least 50 acres. And it can be a father, daughter, doesn't matter. So, uh, so right now, we'll have the first one. Jim Sam. Jim Sam. Uh, we'll just have Jim uh, ex explain his uh, lineage on that, his, his grandma and her grandma and his grandpa, so how that all went. So. Okay, well, thank you. Um, yeah, the, my grandpa said he moved on the farm in, uh, it was actually 1920. Um, he was 15 years old. Uh, he said him and his dad uh, built a chicken coop first and lived in the chicken coop while they built the house. <laughs> and uh, and my, my grandpa farmed, um, you know, gradually took over the farm from his dad and, and uh, Eventually, they got this 1927 Fordson, which is still in my yard. We painted it up and it's still sitting in my yard, kind of on display. It doesn't run, but it's painted nice. Anyway, I, uh, you know, my dad farmed, of course, and dad took over the farm in 66, and my dad retired in 93, and um, I've been going since then. You know, I had a full-time job in my 20s, you know, to make, make things work, you know, I, Started renting land when I was a teenager yet, and uh, but you know you got to kind of work in town to make all that work out if you really want to make it work out. But uh, it's going great now. I got a young guy that works with me three uh, now, great Moglum, and uh, we run a little over 2,000 acres and I just cash cash crop, uh, no no livestock. Um, do some dirt work though. And, and uh, yeah, just be real grateful, and I'm, I'm real happy to be doing what I'm doing, and I think it's the best job in the world. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks. Next, uh, we'll have Fargate's Far Farm, Peterson's. Uh, go back on your religion. Yeah, uh, I'm a good my daughter Rebecca speak because she's she loves a mic in front of herself. So. <laughs> she's actually the one that did the paperwork to get the good yeah, so. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> uh, so um, March first, nineteen twenty, um, the farm was purchased by Christian Peterson. Um, later took over um, from his wife Bertha after he passed away by Bert and Helen Peterson, um, who were the second generation. Uh, Fargaze is now in operation by three brothers, Brian. Bruce and Chris, who isn't here today, um, and they run it in partnership with the fourth generation, uh, John, Tyler, and Sam Peterson, um, and Andrew. Um, the fifth generation, although they aren't driving quite yet, all have the farming bug, so I'm sure we'll have a fifth generation ready to take over here before we know it. Um, but we are proud to have been there 100 years. Um, I'm not directly involved in the operation, but I'm always very proud of what my family has done. Um, Carol Peterson is Bruce's wife. She's here today. And then their sister, Julie, um, is joining us here from the cities today as well. So anything else I missed, Dad? <laughs> you can see how well she does in front of a mic. So <laughs> we always said she should be a DJ or a radio person. So anyway, thanks again for the work. And, uh, I think of Mike and maybe TV. I should stay in radio. That's what they tell me. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again. And thanks to Gear Strand for sponsoring the award and Farm Bureau also. So thanks, Randy. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Congratulations. Thank you, Randy. You have a nice party at Farm Bureau. We'd like to thank our sponsors of this broadcast. And one of the reasons I like to be able to broadcast it is to get the word out in other country, other counties. You have people like this in all the counties. Why not celebrate in their accomplishments at your county fair? So maybe you'd like to get a Hall of Fame program or recognize outstanding people in our big field of agriculture at your county fair. I'd like to thank Community Club Oil Association in Faribault, along with Tara Langevin, Faribault Insurance, the Dakota Rice Corn and Soybean Growers, the Rice County Pork Producers, for sponsoring this broadcast and being as how my boss is here. Do I have two minutes yet? I'd just like to again say thank you for the award. I'm just a plain, simple country boy that is so proud of this industry. 
that we have in this country. And one quick little story, what's really sad about that is I wasn't always proud of our agricultural industry and I wasn't proud of where I came from. You see, when I was a small town country boy and I went to the University of Minnesota, it was quite a reality check. There were about 2,000 people in my hometown. My first class in the West Bank Auditorium, Psych 101, there were 2,000 people in that class. That was kind of a reality check for a small town country boy. Well, I was, my major was ag education, so I was jointly registered in the College of Agriculture in St. Paul and the College of Education in Minneapolis. I learned very quickly, when you go to class over in Minneapolis, you do not let your classmates know you're a small town farm boy from rural Minnesota. Because they instantly start, do I smell anything on their shoes? Where's your pitchfork? Where's your bib overhauls? It's kind of sad when you think about it that you are proud of who you are, and where you came from, and what you're all about. Well, that went on until I was a senior in college. I had to take a class called Public Health over in Minneapolis, about 1,500 kids in this class. And I'll never forget it, our professor, Dr. Green, got up there in the first day of class and we're in this big auditorium. He said, well, there are 1,500 students in this class. So 26 of you are gonna get A's, there are gonna be so many B's, so many C's, and so many no credits. That is already determined. The only thing that is not determined is where you fit on that bell-shaped curve. And this is a tough class, but he said, for anyone that can get an A in this class as a reward after quarter break, I'll take you over to the University of Minnesota Hospital and you can observe a surgery. Well, there was no question I was going to get an A in that class because I wanted to see a surgery. And I thought that was my best chance. The only other opportunity might be if they were operating on me. And I didn't think I'd ever want to watch that. So I got my A after quarter break, we picked times. So there were about half a dozen of us there. And uh, Dr. Green said, well, we have a choice. There's a heart surgery going on, a valve replacement, open heart surgery, or there's a kidney transplant. Well, this was 1977. Dr. John Nigerian at the University of Minnesota was the only surgeon in the world doing heart transplants. Well, we picked that hands down. Then we walked out of his office, down the hall, closed out the keys, opens the door, just like medical center on TV, the big glass dome when you're looking down at some poor soul on the operating table, you really couldn't see much, you know, they were pretty well covered up. And we were watching it all at once, one of the scrub nurses, surgeon, out of, someone came in in a big stainless steel pail dish with a kidney. And we watched him pop it into that person and we couldn't see any more after that because they were doing the surgery inside of the body. Well, then the professor said, let's go over next door and see what's going on with that valve replacement. Operators were just like at the big dome. We looked down and here's this poor soul with their chest but wide open. And they just finished putting the valve in. We watched the surgeon shock the heart, get the heart beating again. And then they sewed this chest up that looked like to me stainless steel bailing wire. Well, then the professor said, come on over to my office. I got some coffee and cookies. And he came up and he said, Jerry, how would you like to go to graduate school in public health? And I was just stunned. I said, what do you mean? I'm going to graduate this spring with a degree in ag education. What in heaven's name does that have to do with public health? And he said, well, let me illustrate my part. First, I did my point. First, I did my due diligence. Anybody that can get an A in this class, I know is qualified has a GPA, but I checked you out anyway. They have a very good GPA. And he said, now, to get your degree in agriculture, what kind of chemistry did you have to take? So we had to take two quarters of inorganic chemistry, a quarter of organic, and a quarter of bio. And he said, what kind of biology did you have to take to get your degree in agriculture? Well, you had to take general biology, and botany, and zoology, and microbiology, and genetics. He said, yep. A degree in agriculture requires a basic science. There's nothing wrong with a liberal arts degree. They've taken philosophy and foreign languages. But for those students that decide they want to go to graduate school, it takes them two years to go back and pick up the basic sciences that the degree in agriculture requires. And he said, on top of that, I know I'm long-winded, this is the moral of the story. He said, those kids over there in the College of Agriculture, they know how to work together, they know how to work, they work together as a team, and they have high moral standards. Man, think about this, here's a professor 
60-something years old. The closest he'd been to a farm in 40 years was probably the grocery store. But he figured out there was something special about those rural kids over there in the College of Agriculture, and he was going over there to recruit his graduate students. Well, they say college is supposed to change your life. Well, it did right there because I decided at that point I could be proud of who I am, who we are, and what we do in terms of not just the economy, but feeding people. What's more noble than producing food for a hungry nation? So that's been the story of my life after that. Be proud of who we are, what we do in our accomplishments. That's what this program is all about. Be proud of who we are and what we do. And I decided at that point I didn't have to feel inferior to anybody in the big city, even though I might not know what kind of wine you're supposed to have with fish. <laughs> Be proud of who we are. We are the wealthiest, most powerful nation in the history of the world because of people like you. And to be able to work with you, not only involved in production agriculture, because I also get to farm, but also finding out what's going on and the excitement of being on the air to talk about it. Thank you. And thank you to Steve and Megan and Laura and Mike and the kids had to leave, and Louise, and I better not forget, I said college changed my life to be proud of who I am. I also met Louise. About 45 years ago, she's put up with a lot. And thank you to the Anchor Business Committee and everybody, and that concludes the program. We'll look forward to doing it again next year.